the healthy vending machine is up next. Thank you. Do we start? Go for it, yeah. Okay. Hi and welcome. Today we would like to introduce you to the healthy vending machine by me, Bernice, Brisa, and Malachi. How can we help students that don't have access to food? We focus on food insecurity, which is the lack of access to healthy food. From our survey conducted at E3, we saw that 38.2% of our scholars have experienced food insecurity before. Our senior class has 94 scholars. So that means that if you were in a classroom with 22 seniors, 17 of those seniors have experienced food insecurity. Now at this time, we would like to show a video of how students as well as teachers help their class. Yeah, so all of this needs to be done. First is potatoes, I'd say. If one of you could shred meat and two of you could do potatoes. So you're making lunch right now? We are. Lunch yes. for how many people? Uh, probably 100 to 120. Yeah. So it's busy time, less than an hour till meal time. That's right, that's right. right. Every other day at the only high school in the Kaluwe, teacher Leo Kronick and a group of students make lunch for the entire school. Not just to be nice. This is the front line in a fight for good food. And on today's menu, poutine. Just kind of shred it into bite-sized pieces as much as you can. And that meat? We have some tutu, um, some caribou. caribou. Yeah. yeah, it's really important that students have access um, to traditional foods. And it's like quite healthy. It's very healthy, yeah. And what's the purpose of this? I'm a food studies teacher, and so in our class we end up having lots of discussions about food insecurity and some of the issues students are experiencing in the school and across the world. And with students, we were kind of discussing what we could do as a school community to help address the issue of food insecurity. And me and Maddie, there's another pan of potatoes here. Across Nunavut, seven out of 10 young people go to bed hungry. Many more can't afford the most nutritious food. So malnourishment is a stark reality in the North, as if it were some faraway land. I mean, there's so much research about the importance of kids having enough to eat. Um, like they're and do kids have enough to eat in the um, north? No, no. Um, yeah, if you speak to any of the students, they can share experiences that are personal or like people they know well, um, struggling to have access to adequate and nutritious and culturally relevant foods. Bacon. We're trying to make it like it has a food care wrap. Why do you guys like doing this? It's really fun and yeah. it's really needed. It's really needed. What do you mean by that? Like, there's a lot of communities out there when there's schools that have so many hungry kids. Like, it's not like that here, but we're well, helping it a lot. So my group and I came up with the Healthy Vending Machine. Our product is filled with free, healthy snack options, is available to any scholar, and includes an ID scanner for easier use. This here is our final product. As you can see, we have the keypad that scholars can use to choose their snack, the ID scanner above it, and a variety of healthy and free snack options. Our main focus is to benefit high school students as well as school districts, and as well as students that are currently experiencing food insecurity. Our competitor analysis is basically for our best time service refreshments and school-sponsored nutrition bags to be compared to our project, which is Healthy Vending Machine, as well as to have healthy snacks, cost, cooling system, ID scanner, and accessibility. So to get a vending machine at E3, there is a one-time cost, which includes both the cost of the vending machine and the keypad with the ID scanner for the total of 1,714. We also anticipated that the snacks in the vending machine would be $284 monthly. And the reason is that we would be filling it up twice a month, which is why it would be $284 monthly. And 
And our next steps would, of course, be getting permission from Dr. Ward for the vending machine to be placed in the building. And then once it's granted, we would announce it. And if scholars wanted to access it, they would use their school ID card and they would easily obtain a snack they would like. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions? How many times a day would a student be able to use the, the vending machine? So they'd be able to use it uh, once a day, just to, um, you know, like be able to like save food for the upcoming days. So we uh, we concluded that they'd be able to access it. They'd be able to access it uh, one time before lunch, so like an hour before lunch. So like say like during nutrition break. And would you also have um, beverages available? Yeah, we, yeah, it'd only be water. Great idea, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me what other, what, uh, I, I, I was distracted for a moment and I didn't hear if you mentioned it exactly, um, what snacks you would have in the vending machine? Did you guys mention that? We didn't mention that, but we oh, do okay. have like the names of the snacks it, if, if we want to say them, if um, Brisa has that list. Oh, so my bad. <laughs> I think I like, okay, never mind. Um, so like we would have granola bars and dried fruit chips and like crackers in the vending machine. Okay, great. Anybody else have any other questions? <laughs>